G'day Frothers, welcome back to the Woody and today we're taking a look at another bit of Zinda gear so this time it's going to be a quick draw. So they make a lot of different combinations of this stuff and I just grabbed the sort of most normal looking quick draw I could just to give it a try. And I have actually climbed on this one. Got it backed up of course. So the carabiners themselves, they feel fine. They actually feel quite well made. Um, you know, nice action, nice and solid, not uh, oppressed that sideways, like the gate's not wobbly or anything. Works just fine as a quick draw and yeah, I, I don't really have any concerns about this build quality wise, other than the sling. So the sling on this is like a single sort of thickness uh, kind of feels like, you know, your tie-down straps kind of webbing. If I just compare that to this DMM one, so you'll see, uh, I don't think it's tubular, this particular stuff, and I, I forget the class of webbing that is, but, you know, it's kind of the double thickness weave, whereas this one is, you know, it's quite thin feeling. So, um, I'm sure it's still going to be standing up to pull testing fine. Uh, they reckon it's 25 kilonewtons. Uh, but my concern with this is it's probably not going to be very durable, you know, because if that rubs on a, on a bit of rock, it's going to be cutting a lot more easily than something like that. But yeah, the carabiners feel totally fine. Comparable to this DMM one here. Now, Zinda is a bit confusing because they do have UIAA certification for at least some of their stuff. But the thing is, I can't find any model numbers to match up the items to the database. So if we look at that, it says CE 1019, it says Zinda uh, EN 12275, and it's got some breaking info. But that is all. There's no little writing on the spine or anything like that. So, does this actually comply with the standard? This one doesn't say UIAA anywhere on it, but does it comply with that standard there? That's the normal carabiner standard that we know and love, EN12275. Well, uh, I'll tell you something for nothing. Just by looking at it, no, it does not comply with that particular standard. So the great thing about these standards is that they tell you what you actually have to mark on the item as well. So in the case of the carabiner standard, You've got to say, or how well can you see that? So you've got to have, you've got to have the braking strain and stuff like that. You've also got to have that, see that little B? That's the, the carabiner class, sorry, the connector class. Uh, that little information symbol, the little read the booklet symbol, uh, as well as the manufacturer. And then for slings, you need to have you need to say the strength, the standard, so EN566 is the sling standard, uh, the manufacturer, and also the year or the date of manufacture. See that? These two things, they would actually comply just from the marking standpoint. This stuff does not. It may well be strong enough, but I'm telling you right now, it does not comply. Oh yeah, and this particular sling, it actually has one of those little um, rubber dealies inside there to prevent spinach of the beaner. So I reckon that this is actually gonna perform fine in a strength test and I will, I will break test them right now. But the thing is, they're not compliant. They are straight up not compliant simply because they don't have the right marking. So I'm gonna pull test these and I, I think I'll break them up, uh, do them separately. Okay, so the first one is rigged up in the puller. Those are 12 millimeter pins, so I'll be pulling sort of according to EN12275. The standard has a lot more to it, but you know, do what we can. Uh, 26.57 as the peak. Okay, blue one. And we need 12, 15. Uh, oh boy. Uh, okay, that landed behind me somewhere. Cool. Okay, peak, about the same, 27. 27.6. Okay, so I put the sling in there. It's uh, 12 millimeter pins, which might be a little bigger than 
what the standard calls for, um, but the 10 millimeter ones I had kind of squished the whole thing up a bit, these ones. So rather than deforming that before we've even started, I've just gone for a slightly bigger pin. There it goes. Nice. 28. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Whew. I've never broken a sling before on this. That is pretty cool. All right, well, uh, they all lived up to their strength claims from the manufacturer. So 26-ish, rated to 25. This guy got up to 28, and that is rated to 25 as well. So slightly better than Zindar is claiming. And just like with those other little beaners we broke recently, these two broke exactly the same way, exactly the same place even. So first the nose pinged off, the blue one went off behind my shelves. I'm never finding that again. Uh, and then the spine broke down here where the basket is. So the fact that these two things, and also the other ones that we tried, those little red ones a while ago, they're, they're all breaking the exact same way. So that tells me that, you know, they're, they're manufactured nice and repeatedly. It tells me that the company, the outdoor equipment company, knows what they're doing. So that's good. Technically, I guess this stuff does comply with these standards they're claiming, but at the same time, it doesn't actually on paper. Bit of a mystery why they aren't just getting it properly certified. I mean, it's not a mystery, it's moolah. But, uh, you know, it's a bit weird. They're making good stuff. Why don't they just make it properly? All right, guys, well, there you go. This Zinda stuff does what it says on the label, just like the other stuff we have tested. So it does still remain to be seen why they're actually doing this, why they're doing like this hodgepodge of kind of decent gear mixed in with just random crap. Actually, one thing I just thought of, maybe it's just old. Some of this older stuff, these DMM beaners, they don't have all the current markings required. They don't have the little, you know, instruction book and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, maybe this stuff from Zinda that I'm getting, maybe it's just old. So the other thing is Zinda does actually have uh, UIAA certification. So if you can actually track down the model numbers for this stuff, you should be able to look it up in the UIAA database and see what is actually certified according to them. In which case, yes, I would trust it. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I do have a bit more Zinda stuff that I'm gonna be testing and I will try and look up the standards as well as I, as I like to do, just to see if they are actually, you know, doing what they should be. So if there's anything you want me to test, let us know. Even better, chip us a couple of bucks on Patreon or, you know, Buy me some, donate some, otherwise I'll just do what I can when I get around to it. So anyway, thanks again for watching, like and subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. And uh, yeah, happy climbing.